a secret weapon so rare it took two discords, multiple days, and hundreds of messages back and forth to hunt down. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing how to find the most elusive weapon in Remnant 2's new DLC, Anguish. First things first, a huge shout out to Fometo for being the first to crack the secret of Anguish. As someone sitting on the sidelines watching all of the crazy theories and tests take place, I can genuinely say there are very few games who can incite such a fun community frenzy. That being said, Anguish is a terribly tricky weapon to track down, and thanks to some good old data mining and the help of the Remnant 2 Save Guardian, a few folks managed to crack its secrets. Before we dive into the how, I want to break down the what, because if you don't know what you're chasing after, it's hardly worth it. Anguish is a new handgun that players can find as part of the Awakened King DLC. Anguish is technically a shotgun. The gun fires off heated bits of molten slag, much like the Sparkfire shotgun, but the two weapons are different. Anguish features a unique alternate fire mode that allows you to charge a strong single target, almost rifle-like shot that hits the target, dealing damage, and then explodes in a medium-sized AoE. The weapon also features the baked-in weapon mod Load the Weak, which when activated, turns Anguish into a machine gun firing off volatile needles that explode after a few seconds, dealing explosive damage in an incredibly small AoE. When leveled up to plus 10, Anguish has a baseline of 35 damage, fires off 1.7 rounds per second, and has a magazine capacity of 5. Unlike the Sparkfire shotgun, this weapon is reloaded more as a clip, not as individual rounds, so it's a slightly faster reload speed. The weapon has a short range, as to be expected, but its alternate fire mode is perfectly capable of dealing damage at mid and even long range depending on your accuracy. The weapon's critical hit chance is 5%, the weak spot damage bonus is plus 100%, and the stagger modifier is 0%. All in all, Anguish is an okay weapon. What's most interesting about it is the fact that it's a shotgun, rifle, and machine gun all in one, so there's definitely some interesting ways you can approach it. Unfortunately, being a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, means it's hard to see myself using this weapon instead of something else. In every category, there's a gun that outshines Anguish, including the new Sparkfire shotgun, another weapon introduced in the DLC. Still, I know many of you are collectors out there, so if you do manage to track down Anguish, I'd love to know what you think about the weapon and how you'd build out a full loadout around the gun. Let us know in the comments down below because I'm genuinely curious how you could make this gun work in an apocalypse build. Now that you know what we're after, it's time to hunt down Anguish. The act of hunting down Anguish can happen across both campaign mode and adventure mode, but you will need access to both Root Earth and the Labyrinth, so having a progressed campaign mode is key. If you don't, you'll need to work through campaign mode until you have access to both zones. The next step is to reroll Low Sum or the Awakened King content at the World Stone in Word 13. I highly recommend you download the Remnant 2 Save Guardian, which analyzes your world every time you interact with the World Stone. What you're looking for is any of the loathsome fire dungeon maps with the Ethereal Manor injectable. The event should spawn off of the Sunken Haunt map, as well as Cotton's Kiln, the Derelict Lighthouse, or even the Butcher's Quarters, so as you're re-rolling your adventure, be sure to really scan the list so you don't miss the injectable. Of course, if you still have your one-shot adventure, this becomes a lot easier. Once you've confirmed your game has the Ethereal Manor, progress through the world until you find the location. This is where the magic all begins. Enter the mansion and make your way to the Dran that's slumped over in the chair on the second floor. Let him grab you and he'll scream, wake up. When you respawn, you'll be in an alternate version of the manor, and at this point, the long quest line to acquire anguish has begun. Next, you'll want to use the Liquid Death Consumable. This will technically kill you, but instead of respawning back at the World Stone, you'll be in an entirely new area. Be sure to grab the Crimson Dreamstone Ring on the throne if you haven't done so already. When you're ready to leave, use the checkpoint to port back to Ward 13. Do not, I repeat, do not use Liquid Death again, because from this point onwards, if you die at all, the quest resets. Back in Ward 13, walk past the firing range and down the slope towards where you first met Ford. By the broken down truck is a Dran, mysteriously ported from Losum to our world. Talk to the Dran and your screen will flash and he'll be gone. At this point, you can head back to the World Stone and you'll want to re-roll Yesha on Adventure Mode until you have the Red Empress storyline. No other specific factors are required, so you don't need to use the Save Guardian here. Spawn into the Red Throne starting zone and head towards the prison section. Down the hallway, propped up against the wall, is our friend the Dran. 
Again, interact with him, the screen will flash, and poof, he's gone. Now you'll need to flip your game over to campaign mode and head into the labyrinth. Spawn in at the fractured ingress and head up the stairs to the left of the giant portal. Make your way to the top and the overlook behind the portal, and there again you'll find our Dran friend taking in the view. Interact with him and he'll be gone in another flash of light. Next you'll need to load up an instance of Nerud and the Talratha storyline. You need to make your way to the Talratha Refuge World Stone towards the end of the adventure, and there, against some of the strange capsules, is the Dran still searching for his dream. Once again, talk to him, and he'll disappear. Up next, you'll need to head to Root Earth. You'll need to spawn in and make your way past the train yard where you first had to survive an onslaught of enemies. Reach the small checkpoint, and against the chain link fence is the Dran. You know the drill, talk to him, he disappears, we move on. The final step requires us to spawn into an instance of Losum with the Nightweaver storyline. You need to progress through the entire zone until you can reach the Tormented Asylum, the zone where you actually engage the Nightweaver. Head down to the basement and make your way towards the dead end hallway. There will be our Dran friend in his penultimate resting spot. Talk to him, he'll disappear, but this time you'll receive an item, Dran's Dream. Go into your inventory, locate the item, add it to your quick slots, and then interact with it within the world and your character will smash the item into the ground, and after a short load screen, you'll end up in a new zone called the Forgotten Null. It's a rather serene place, almost dreamlike, if you will, and it's there you'll find our Dran companion, finally happy with his lot in life, staring out at the endless waves. Next to him is the crafting material, occult vessel, the item we've been searching for. Warp back to Ward 13 and take the crafting material back to Ava McCabe, where she'll turn the item into anguish. I'll be honest with you guys, I love gunfire games. Our whole team does. I think we've made that clear in our coverage. But this secret was a bit of a stretch. While the community didn't technically need data mining or a save analyzer to get anguish, it's pretty clear both were used to find the breadcrumbs that led to the weapon. Even still, console players don't have access to those same tools as PC players, and currently the spawn rate of the Ethereal Manor is so low that most PC players do have a clear advantage. I am confident the team will fix some of the bugs that seem to be connected to this item, but still, it feels like a bit of a slight to our friends on PS5 and Xbox. While a bit convoluted, it was fun to be part of the community hunting down the weapon, so hopefully the team can continue to surprise us with at least two more Remnant 2 DLCs coming in the future. So there you have it, a quick video to help you unlock the secret weapon, Anguish. If you found this quick guide helpful, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. We've got more Remnant 2 coming your way, and we'd love to have you along for the ride. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.